Karnataka, Karnataka is a state in the southwestern region of India. It was formed on 1 November 1956, with the passage of the State's Reorganisation Act. Originally known as the State of Mysore, it was renamed Karnataka in 1973. The state corresponds to the Carnatic region. The capital and largest city is Bangalore Bengaluru. Karnataka is bordered by the Arabian Sea to the west, Goa to the northwest, Maharashtra to the north, Telangana to the northeast, Andhra Pradesh to the east, Tamil Nadu to the southeast, and Kerala to the south. The state covers an area of 191,976 square kilometers, 74,122 square miles, or 5.83% of the total geographical area of India. It is the seventh largest Indian state by area. With 61,130,704 inhabitants at the 2011 census, Karnataka is the eighth largest state by population, comprising 30 districts. Kannada, one of the classical languages of India, is the most widely spoken and official language of the state alongside Konkani, Marathi, Tulu, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kodava and Bari. Karnataka also has the only three naturally Sanskrit-speaking districts in India. The two main river systems of the state are the Krishna and its tributaries, the Bhima, Ghataprabha, Vedavathi, Malaprabha, and Tungabhadra, in the north, and the Kaveri and its tributaries, the Hemavati, Shimsha, Arkavati, Lakshmana Thirtha and Kabini, in the south. Most of these rivers flow out of Karnataka eastward, reaching the sea at the Bay of Bengal. Though several etymologies have been suggested for the name Karnataka, the generally accepted one is that Karnataka is derived from the Kannada words Karu and Nadu, meaning, elevated land. Karu Nadu may also be read as Karu, meaning, black, and Nadu, meaning, region, as a reference to the black cotton soil found in the Bayalusimi region of the state. The British used the word Karnatak, sometimes Karnatak, to describe both sides of peninsular India, south of the Krishna. The economy of Karnataka is the fifth largest state economy in India with 14.08 lakh rupees crore $200 billion in gross domestic product and a per capita GDP of 174,000 rupees. $2, with an antiquity that dates to the Paleolithic, Karnataka has been home to some of the most powerful empires of ancient and medieval India. The philosophers and musical bards patronized by these empires launched socio-religious and literary movements which have endured to the present day. Karnataka has contributed significantly to both forms of Indian classical music, the Carnatic and Hindustani traditions. History Topic. Karnataka's pre-history goes back to a Paleolithic hand axe culture evidenced by discoveries of, among other things, hand axes and cleavers in the region. Evidence of Neolithic and Megalithic cultures have also been found in the state. Gold discovered in Harappa was found to be imported from mines in Karnataka, prompting scholars to hypothesize about contacts between ancient Karnataka and the Indus Valley Civilization ca. 3300 BCE. Prior to the 3rd century BCE, most of Karnataka formed part of the Nanda Empire before coming under the Mauryan Empire of Emperor Ashoka. Four centuries of Satavahana rule followed, allowing them to control large areas of Karnataka. The decline of Satavahana power led to the rise of the earliest native kingdoms, the Kadambas and the western Gangas, marking the region's emergence as an independent political entity. The Kadamba dynasty, founded by Sharma, had its capital at Banavasi. The western Ganga dynasty was formed with Talakad as its capital. These were also the first kingdoms to use Kannada in administration, as evidenced by the Halmidi inscription and a 5th century copper coin discovered at Banavasi. These dynasties were followed by imperial Kannada empires such as the Badami Chalukyas, the Rashtrakuta Empire of Manyakita and the Western Chalukya Empire, which ruled over large parts of the Deccan and had their capitals in what is now Karnataka. The Western Chalukyas patronized a unique style of architecture and Kannada literature which became a precursor to the Hoysala art of the 12th century. Parts of modern-day southern Karnataka Gangavadi were occupied by the Chola Empire at the turn of the 11th century. The Cholas and the Hoysalas fought over the region in the early 12th century before it eventually came under Hoysala rule. At the turn of the first millennium, the Hoysalas gained power in the region. 
Literature flourished during this time, which led to the emergence of distinctive Kannada literary meters, and the construction of temples and sculptures adhering to the Vesara style of architecture. The expansion of the Hoysala Empire brought minor parts of modern Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu under its rule. In the early 14th century, Harihara and Bukka Raya established the Vijayanagara Empire with its capital, Hosapatana later named Vijayanagara, on the banks of the Tungabhadra River in the modern Bellary district. The empire rose as a bulwark against Muslim advances into South India, which it completely controlled for over two centuries. In 1565, Karnataka and the rest of South India experienced a major geopolitical shift when the Vijayanagara Empire fell to a confederation of Islamic sultanates in the Battle of Talakota. The Bijapur Sultanate, which had risen after the demise of the Bahmani Sultanate of Bidar, soon took control of the Deccan. It was defeated by the Mughals in the late 17th century. The Bahmani and Bijapur rulers encouraged Urdu and Persian literature and Indo Saracenic architecture, the Gol Gumbas being one of the high points of this style. During the 16th century, Konkani Hindus migrated to Karnataka, mostly from Salset, Goa, while during the 17th and 18th century, Goan Catholics migrated to North Kanara and South Kanara, especially from Bards, Goa, as a result of food shortages, epidemics, and heavy taxation imposed by the Portuguese. In the period that followed, parts of northern Karnataka were ruled by the Nizam of Hyderabad, the Maratha Empire, the British, and other powers. In the south, the Mysore Kingdom, a former vassal of the Vijayanagara Empire, was briefly independent. With the death of Krishnaraja Wodyar II, Haydar Ali, the commander-in-chief of the Mysore army, gained control of the region. After his death, the kingdom was inherited by his son Tipu Sultan. To contain European expansion in South India, Haydar Ali and later Tipu Sultan fought four significant Anglo-Mysore wars, the last of which resulted in Tipu Sultan's death and the incorporation of Mysore into the British Raj in 1799. The Kingdom of Mysore was restored to the Wodyars and Mysore remained a princely state under the British Raj. As the Doctrine of Lapse gave way to dissent and resistance from princely states across the country. Kittor Chenama, Sangoli Rayana and others spearheaded rebellions in Karnataka in 1830, nearly three decades before the Indian Rebellion of 1857. However, Kitturu was taken over by the British East India Company even before the doctrine was officially articulated by Lord Dalhousie in 1848. Other uprisings followed, such as the ones at Supa, Bagalkot, Shorapur, Nargand and Dandali. These rebellions, which coincided with the Indian Rebellion of 1857 were led by Mundargi Bhimarao, Bhaskar Rao Bhavi, the Haligali Bedas, Raja Venkatapa Nayaka and others. By the late 19th century, the independence movement had gained momentum, Karnad Sadashiva Rao, Aluru Venkata Raya, S. Nijalingapa, Kengal Hanumanthaya, Nitor Srinivasa Rao and others carried on the struggle into the early 20th century, after India. Independence, the Maharaja, Jayachamarajendra Wodyar, allowed his kingdom's accession to India. In 1950, Mysore became an Indian state of the same name. The former Maharaja served as its Rajpramukh head of state until 1975. Following the long standing demand of the Akikarana movement, Kodagu and Kannada speaking regions from the adjoining states of Madras, Hyderabad, and Bombay were incorporated into the Mysore state, under the State's Reorganisation Act of 1956. The thus expanded state was renamed Karnataka, 17 years later, in 1973. In the early 1900s through the post-independence era, industrial visionaries such as Sir Mokshagundam Visvesvaraya, born in Mudanahalli, Chikbalapur district, played an important role in the development of Karnataka's strong manufacturing and industrial base. Geography <laughs> 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 The state has three principal geographical zones. The coastal region of Karavali. The hilly Malinadu region comprising the Western Ghats. The Bialusim region comprising the plains of the Deccan Plateau. The bulk of the state is in the Bialusim region, the northern part of which is the second largest arid region in India. The highest point in Karnataka is the Mulayanagiri Hills in Chikmagalur district which has an altitude of 1,929 metres 6 feet. Some of the important rivers in Karnataka are Kaveri, Tungabhadra, Krishna, Malaprabha and the Sharavathi. 
A large number of dams and reservoirs are constructed across these rivers which richly add to the irrigation and hydel power generation capacities of the state. Karnataka consists of four main types of geological formations. The Archean complex made up of Darwad schists and granitic gneisses, the Proterozoic non-fossiliferous sedimentary formations of the Kalaji and Bhima series, the Deccan Trappian and Intertrappian deposits and the tertiary and recent laterites and alluvial deposits. Significantly, about 60% of the state is composed of the Archean complex which consist of gneisses, granites and charnakite rocks. Laterite cappings that are found in many districts over the Deccan Traps were formed after the cessation of volcanic activity in the early tertiary period. Eleven groups of soil orders are found in Karnataka, viz. Intisols, Inceptisols, Molosols, Spotosols, Alphasols, Ultasols, Oxisols, Aridosols, Vertisols, Andosols and Histosols. Depending on the agricultural capability of the soil, the soil types are divided into six types, viz. Red, lateritic, black, alluvio-colluvial, forest and coastal soils. Karnataka experiences four seasons. The winter in January and February is followed by summer between March and May, the monsoon season between June and September and the post-monsoon season from October till December. Meteorologically, Karnataka is divided into three zones. Coastal, North Interior and South Interior. Of these, the coastal zone receives the heaviest rainfall with an average rainfall of about 3,638.5 mm per annum, far in excess of the state average of 1,139 mm A gum in the Shivamaga district receives the second highest annual rainfall in India. The highest recorded temperature was 45.6 degrees Celsius (114 degrees Fahrenheit) at Raichur, and the lowest recorded temperature was 2.8 degrees Celsius (37 degrees Fahrenheit) at Bidar. About 38,724 square kilometers (14,951 square miles) of Karnataka, i.e., 20% of the state's geographic area, is covered by forests. The forests are classified as reserved, protected, unclosed, village and private forests. The percentage of forested area is slightly less than the All India average of about 23%, and significantly less than the 33% prescribed in the National Forest Policy. <inaudible> Subdivisions There are 30 districts in Karnataka, each district is governed by a district commissioner or district magistrate. The districts are further divided into subdivisions, which are governed by subdivisional magistrates. Subdivisions comprise blocks containing panchayats, village councils, and town municipalities. At the 2011 census, Karnataka's 10 largest cities, sorted in order of decreasing population, were Bangalore, Hubli Darwad, Mysuru, Gulbarga, Belgaum, Mangalore, Davangere, Bellary, Vijayapur, and Shimoga. Topic. Demographics Topic. According to the 2011 Census of India, the total population of Karnataka was 61,095,297 of which 30,966,657 were male and 30,128,640 were female, or 1,000 males for every 973 females. This represents a 15.60% increase over the population in 2001. The population density was 319 per square kilometers and 38.67% of the people lived in urban areas. The literacy rate was 75.36% with 82.47% of males and 68.08% of females being literate. 84.00% of the population were Hindu, 12.92% were Muslim, 1.87% were Christian, 0.72% were Jains, 0.16% were Buddhist, 0.05% were Sikh and 0.02% were belonging to other religions and 0.27% of the population did not state their religion. Kannada is the official language of Karnataka and spoken as a native language by about 66.54% of the people as of 2011. 
Other linguistic minorities in the state were Urdu 10.83%, Telugu 5.84%, Tamil 3.45%, Marathi 3.38%, Hindi 3.3%, Tulu 2.61%, Konkani 1.29%, Malayalam 1.27% and Kodavatak 0.18%. In 2007 the state had a birth rate of 2.2%, a death rate of 0.7%, an infant mortality rate of 5.5% and a maternal mortality rate of 0.2%. The total fertility rate was 2.2. In the field of speciality health care, Karnataka's private sector competes with the best in the world. Karnataka has also established a modicum of public health services having a better record of health care and child care than most other states of India. In spite of these advances, some parts of the state still leave much to be desired when it comes to primary health care. <laughs> Government and administration Topic. Karnataka has a parliamentary system of government with two democratically elected houses, the Legislative Assembly and the Legislative Council. The Legislative Assembly consists of 224 members who are elected for five-year terms. The Legislative Council is a permanent body of 75 members with one-third retiring every two years. The government of Karnataka is headed by the Chief Minister who is chosen by the ruling party members of the Legislative Assembly. The chief minister, along with the Council of Ministers, executes the legislative agenda and exercises most of the executive powers. However, the constitutional and formal head of the state is the governor who is appointed for a five-year term by the President of India on the advice of the Union government. The people of Karnataka also elect 28 members to the Lok Sabha, the lower house of the Indian parliament. The members of the State Legislative Assembly elect 12 members to the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of the Indian Parliament. For administrative purposes, Karnataka has been divided into four revenue divisions, 49 subdivisions, 30 districts, 175 taliks and 745 hoblis, revenue circles. The administration in each district is headed by a deputy commissioner who belongs to the Indian Administrative Service and is assisted by a number of officers belonging to Karnataka State Services. The Deputy Commissioner of Police, an officer belonging to the Indian Police Service and assisted by the officers of the Karnataka Police Service, is entrusted with the responsibility of maintaining law and order and related issues in each district. The Deputy Conservator of Forests, an officer belonging to the Indian Forest Service, is entrusted with the responsibility of managing forests, environment and wildlife of the district. He will be assisted by the officers belonging to Karnataka Forest Service and officers belonging to Karnataka Forest Subordinate Service. Sectoral development in the districts is looked after by the district head of each development department such as Public Works Department, Health, Education, Agriculture, Animal Husbandry, etc. The judiciary in the state consists of the Karnataka High Court Atara Kacheri in Bangalore, Darwad and Gulbarga, district and session courts in each district and lower courts and judges at the Taluk level. Politics in Karnataka has been dominated by three political parties, the Indian National Congress, the Janata Dal secular, and the Bharatiya Janata Party. Politicians from Karnataka have played prominent roles in federal government of India with some of them having held the high positions of Prime Minister and Vice President. Border disputes involving Karnataka's claim on the Kasaragod and Solapur districts and Maharashtra's claim on Belgaum are ongoing since the state's reorganization. The official emblem of Karnataka has a Ganda Burunda in the centre. Surmounting this are four lions facing the four directions, taken from the lion capital of Ashoka at Sarnath. The emblem also carries two sharabas with the head of an elephant and the body of a lion. Economy Karnataka had an estimated GSDP gross state domestic product of about $115.86 billion in the 2014-15 fiscal year. The state registered a GSDP growth rate of 7% for the year 2014-2015. Karnataka's contribution to India's GDP in the year 2014-15 was 7.54%. 
with GDP growth of 17.59% and per capita GDP growth of 16.04%, Karnataka is on the sixth position among all states and union territories. In an employment survey conducted for the year 2013-2014, the unemployment rate in Karnataka was 1.8% compared to the national rate of 4.9%. In 2011-2012, Karnataka had an estimated poverty ratio of 20.91% compared to the national ratio of 21.92%. Nearly 56% of the workforce in Karnataka is engaged in agriculture and related activities. A total of 12.31 million hectares of land, or 64.6% .6 of the state's total area, is cultivated. Much of the agricultural output is dependent on the southwest monsoon, as only 26.5% of the sown area is irrigated. Karnataka is the manufacturing hub for some of the largest public sector industries in India, including Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, National Aerospace Laboratories, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, Bharat Earth Movers Limited, and HMT, formerly Hindustan Machine Tools, which are based in Bangalore. Many of India's premier science and technology research centres, such as Indian Space Research Organisation, Central Power Research Institute, Bharat Electronics Limited and the Central Food Technological Research Institute, are also headquartered in Karnataka. Mangalore Refinery and Petrochemicals Limited is an oil refinery, located in Mangalore. The state has also begun to invest heavily in solar power centred on the Pavagada Solar Park. As of December 2017, the state has installed an estimated 2.2 gigawatts of block solar paneling and in January 2018 announced a tender to generate a further 1.2 gigawatts in the coming years. Karnataka Renewable Energy Development suggests that this will be based on 24 separate systems or blocks, generating 50 megawatts each. Since the 1980s, Karnataka has emerged as the pan-Indian leader in the field of IT, information technology. In 2007, there were nearly 2,000 firms operating in Karnataka. Many of them, including two of India's biggest software firms, Infosys and Wipro, are also headquartered in the state. Exports from these firms exceeded 50,000 crore rupees $12.5 billion in 2006-07, accounting for nearly 38% of all IT exports from India. The Nandi Hills area in the outskirts of Devanahalli is the site of the upcoming $22 billion, 50 square kilometre Beal It investment region, one of the largest infrastructure projects in the history of Karnataka. All this has earned the state capital, Bangalore, the sobriquet Silicon Valley of India. Karnataka also leads the nation in biotechnology. It is home to India. S largest biocluster, with 158 of the country's 320 biotechnology firms being based here. The state accounts for 75% of India's floriculture, an upcoming industry which supplies flowers and ornamental plants worldwide. Seven of India's banks, Kanara Bank, Syndicate Bank, Corporation Bank, Vijaya Bank, Karnataka Bank, Ingvasia Bank and the State Bank of Mysore originated in this state. The coastal districts of Udupi and Dakshina Kannada have a branch for every 500 persons. The best distribution of banks in India. In March 2002, Karnataka had 4,767 branches of different banks with each branch serving 11,000 persons, which is lower than the national average of 16,000. A majority of the silk industry in India is headquartered in Karnataka, much of it in Dadabalapura, and the state government intends to invest 70 crore rupees in a Silk City", at Mudanahalli, near Bangalore International Airport. Transport Air transport in Karnataka, as in the rest of the country, is still a fledgling but fast-expanding sector. Karnataka has airports at Bangalore, Mangalore, Belgaum, Hubli, Hampi, Bellary, and Mysore with international operations from Bangalore and Mangalore airports. Karnataka has a railway network with a total length of approximately 3,089 kilometers (1,919 miles). Until the creation of the South Western Zone headquartered at Hubli in 2003, the railway network in the state was in the Southern and Western Railway Zones. 
Several parts of the state now come under the southwestern zone, with the remainder under the southern railways. Coastal Karnataka is covered under the Konkan Railway Network which was considered India's biggest railway project of the century. Bangalore is well connected with interstate destinations, while other towns in the state are not. Karnataka has 11 ports, including the new Mangalore port, a major port and 10 minor ports, of which three were operational in 2012. The new Mangalore port was incorporated as the ninth major port in India on 4 May 1974. This port handled 32.04 million tonnes of traffic in the fiscal year 2006–07 with 17.92 million tonnes of imports and 14.12 million tonnes of exports. The port also handled 10-15 vessels including 18 cruise vessels during the year 2006–07. Foreigners can enter Mangalore through the new Mangalore port with the help of electronic visa e -visa. Cruise ships from Europe, North America and UAE arrive at new Mangalore port to visit the tourist places across coastal Karnataka. The total lengths of national highways and state highways in Karnataka are 3973 and 9829 kilometers, 2469 and 6107 miles respectively. The KSRTC, the State Public Transport Corporation, transports an average of 2.2 million passengers daily and employs about 25,000 people. In the late 90s, KSRTC was split into four corporations, viz., the Bangalore Metropolitan Transport Corporation, the Northeast Karnataka Road Transport Corporation and the Northwest Karnataka Road Transport Corporation with their headquarters in Bangalore, Gulbarga and Hubli respectively, and with the remnant of the KSRTC maintaining operations in the rest of the state from its headquarters in Bangalore. Culture. Topic. The diverse linguistic and religious ethnicities that are native to Karnataka, combined with their long histories, have contributed immensely to the varied cultural heritage of the state. Apart from Kanadigas, Karnataka is home to Tuluvas, Kodavas and Konkanis. Minor populations of Tibetan Buddhists and tribes like the Solaigas, Yeravas, Todas and Siddhas also live in Karnataka. The traditional folk arts cover the entire gamut of music, dance, drama, storytelling by itinerant troops, etc. Yakshagana of Malnad and coastal Karnataka, a classical dance drama, is one of the major theatrical forms of Karnataka. Contemporary theatre culture in Karnataka remains vibrant with organizations like Ninasam, Ranga Shankara, Rangayana, and Prabhat Kalavidaru continuing to build on the foundations laid by Gubi Virana, T. P. Kailasam, B. V. Karanth, K. V. Subana, Prasanna, and others. Viragays, Kamsale, Kalata, and Dolu Kunatha are popular dance forms. The Mysore style of Bharatanatya, nurtured and popularized by the likes of the legendary Jati Tayama, continues to hold sway in Karnataka, and Bangalore also enjoys an eminent place as one of the foremost centers of Bharatanatya. Karnataka also has a special place in the world of Indian classical music, with both Karnataka Karnatic and Hindustani styles finding place in the state, and Karnataka has produced a number of stalwarts in both styles. The Haridasa movement of the 16th century contributed significantly to the development of Karnataka Carnatic music as a performing art form. Purandara Dasa, one of the most revered Haridasas, is known as the Karnataka Sangeeta Patamaha, father of Karnataka aka Carnatic music. Celebrated Hindustani musicians like Gangubai Hangal, Malikarjan Mansur, Bhimsan Joshi, Basavaraha Rajaguru, Sawai Gandharva and several others hail from Karnataka, and some of them have been recipients of the Kalidas Salmon, Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan Awards. Noted Carnatic musicians include Violin T. Chaudhaya, Veena Sheshana, Mysore Vasudevachar, Doraswami Iyengar and Thit Krishna Iyengar. Gamaka is another classical music genre based on Carnatic music that is practiced in Karnataka. Kannada Bhavajit is a genre of popular music that draws inspiration from the expressionist poetry of modern poets. The Mysore school of painting has produced painters like Sundaraya, Tanjavar Khandeya, B. Venkatapa and Keshavaya. Chitrakala Parishat is an organization in Karnataka dedicated to promoting painting, mainly in the Mysore painting style. Sari is the traditional dress of women in Karnataka. Women in Kodagu have a distinct style of wearing the sari, different from the rest of Karnataka. Dhoti, known as Panche in Karnataka, is the traditional attire of men. 
Shirt, trousers and salwar kameez are widely worn in urban areas. Mysore pita is the traditional headgear of southern Karnataka, while the pagadi or pataga similar to the Rajasthani turban is preferred in the northern areas of the state. Rice and ragi form the staple food in South Karnataka, whereas gelada rati, sorghum is staple to North Karnataka. Bisi bel bath, gelada rati, ragi mud, upatu, ben dos, masala dos and mador vade are some of the popular food items in Karnataka. Among sweets, Mysore pak, karadantu of gokak and amingad, belgavi kunda and darwad peta are popular. Apart from this, coastal Karnataka and Kodagu have distinctive cuisines of their own. Udupi cuisine of coastal Karnataka is popular all over India. Religion Adi Shankaracharya chose Sringeri in Karnataka to establish the first of his four mathas monastery. Madhvacharya was the chief proponent of Tattvavada philosophy of reality, popularly known as Dvaita or dualistic school of Hindu philosophy—one of the three most influential Vedanta philosophies. Madhvacharya was one of the important philosophers during the Bhakti movement. He was a pioneer in many ways, going against standard conventions and norms. According to tradition, Madhvacharya is believed to be the third incarnation of Vayu after Hanuman and Bhima. The Haridasa devotional movement is considered as one of the turning points in the cultural history of India. Over a span of nearly six centuries, several saints and mystics helped shape the culture, philosophy and art of South India and Karnataka in particular by exerting considerable spiritual influence over the masses and kingdoms that ruled South India. This movement was ushered in by the Haridasas literally, servants of Lord Hari, and took shape in the 13th century 14th century CE, period, prior to and during the early rule of the Vijayanagara Empire. The main objective of this movement was to propagate the Dvaita philosophy of Madhvacharya Madhvasiddhanta to the masses through a literary medium known as Dasa Sahitya literature of the servants of the Lord. Parandaradasa is widely recognized as the Pithamaha of Carnatic music for his immense contribution. Ramanujacharya, the leading expounder of Vishishtadvaita, spent many years in Melkot. He came to Karnataka in 1098 AD and lived here until 1122 AD. He first lived in Tundanur and then moved to Melkote where the Chelavanarayana Swami temple and a well-organized matha were built. He was patronized by the Hoysala king, Vishnuvardhana. In the 12th century, Lingayatism emerged in northern Karnataka as a protest against the rigidity of the prevailing social and caste system. Leading figures of this movement were Basava, Akka Mahadevi and Allama Prabhu, who established the Anubhava Mantapa which was the center of all religious and philosophical thoughts and discussions pertaining to Ligayats. These three social reformers did so by the literary means of Vachana Sahitya, which is very famous for its simple, straightforward and easily understandable Kannada language. Lingayatism preached women equality by letting women wear Ishtalinga i.e. symbol of God around their neck. Basava shunned the sharp hierarchical divisions that existed and sought to remove all distinctions between the hierarchically superior master class and the subordinate, servile class. He also supported intercaste marriages and Kayaka Tattva of Basavana. This was the basis of the Lingayat faith, which today counts millions among its followers. The Jain philosophy and literature have contributed immensely to the religious and cultural landscape of Karnataka. Islam, which had an early presence on the west coast of India as early as the 10th century, gained a foothold in Karnataka with the rise of the Bahamani and Bijapur sultanates that ruled parts of Karnataka. Christianity reached Karnataka in the 16th century with the arrival of the Portuguese and Saint Francis Javier in 1545. Buddhism was popular in Karnataka during the first millennium in places such as Gulbarga and Banavasi. A chance discovery of edicts and several Mauryan relics at Sanati in Gulbarga district in 1986 has proven that the Krishna River Basin was once home to both Mahayana and Hinayana Buddhism. There are Tibetan refugee camps in Karnataka. <laughs> Festivals Mysore Dussehra is celebrated as the Nada Habba state festival and this is marked by major festivities at Mysore. 
Ugadi Kannada New Year, Makara Sankranti the Harvest Festival, Ganesh Chaturthi, Gauri Habba, Ram Navami, Nagapanchami, Basava Jayanti, Deepavali, and Ramzan are the other major festivals of Karnataka. Language <inaudible> 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 The Kannada language serves as the official language of the state of Karnataka, as the native language of approximately 65% of its population and as one of the classical languages of India. Kannada played a crucial role in the creation of Karnataka. Linguistic demographics played a major role in defining the new state in 1956. Tulu, Konkani, and Kodava are other minor native languages that share a long history in the state. Urdu is spoken widely by the Muslim population. Less widely spoken languages include Bari Bashi and certain languages such as Sankathi. Some of the regional languages in Karnataka are Tulu, Kodava, Konkani, and Bari. Kannada features a rich and ancient body of literature, including religious and secular genre, covering topics as diverse as Jainism, such as Puranas, Virashaivism, such as Vachanas, Vaishnavism, such as Haridasa Sahitya, and modern literature. Evidence from edicts during the time of Ashoka reign 274-232 BCE suggest that Buddhist literature influenced the Kannada script and its literature. The Halmidi inscription, the earliest attested full-length inscription in the Kannada language and script, dates from 450 CE, while the earliest available literary work, the Kavirajamarga, has been dated to 850 CE. References made in the Kavirajamarga, however, prove that Kannada literature flourished in the native composition meters such as Chitana, Bedande and Melvadu during earlier centuries. The classic refers to several earlier greats of Kannada poetry and prose, Kuvampu, the renowned Kannada poet and writer who wrote Jaya Bharata Jananiya Tanuhate, the state anthem of Karnataka, was the first recipient of the Karnataka Ratna. Award, the highest civilian award bestowed by the government of Karnataka. Contemporary Kannada literature has received considerable acknowledgement in the arena of Indian literature, with eight Kannada writers winning India's highest literary honour, the Neonpith Award. Tulu is spoken mainly in the coastal districts of Udupi and Dakshina Kannada. Tulu Mahabharato, written by Arunabja in the Tigalari script, is the oldest surviving Tulu text. Tigalari script was used by Brahmins to write Sanskrit language. The use of the Kannada script for writing Tulu and non-availability of print in Tigalari script contributed to the marginalization of Tigalari script. Konkani is mostly spoken in the Atara Kannada and Dakshina Kannada districts and in parts of Udupi. Konkani use the Kannada script for writing. The Kodavas who mainly reside in the Kodagu district, speak Kodava talk. Two regional variations of the language exist, the northern Mandale Taka and the southern Kigati Taka. Kodava Tak use the Kannada script for writing. English is the medium of education in many schools and widely used for business communication in most private companies. All of the state's languages are patronized and promoted by governmental and quasi-governmental bodies. The Kannada Sahitya Parishat and the Kannada Sahitya Akademi are responsible for the promotion of Kannada while the Karnataka Konkani Sahitya Akademi, the Tulu Sahitya Akademi and the Kodava Sahitya Akademi promote their respective languages. Education <inaudible> 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 As per the 2011 census, Karnataka had a literacy rate of 75.36%, with 82.47% of males and 68.08% of females in the state being literate. In 2001, the literacy rate of the state were 67.04%, with 76.29% of males and 57.45% of females being literate. The state is home to some of the premier educational and research institutions of India such as the Indian Institute of Science, the Indian Institute of Management, the Indian Institute of Technology Darwad, the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, the National Institute of Technology Karnataka and the National Law School of India University. In March 2006, Karnataka had 54,529 primary schools with 252,875 teachers and 8.495 million students, and 9,498 secondary schools with 92,287 teachers and 1.384 million students. 
There are three kinds of schools in the state, viz., government-run, private-aided financial aid is provided by the government and private-unaided no financial aid is provided. The primary languages of instruction in most schools are Kannada and English. The syllabus taught in the schools is either of the CBSE, the ICSE or the State Syllabus SSLC defined by the Department of Public Instruction of the Government of Karnataka. However, some schools follow the NIOS syllabus. The state has two sonic schools in Kodagu Sonic School in Kodagu and in Bijapur Sonic School in Bijapur. To maximize attendance in schools, the Karnataka government has launched a midday meal scheme in government and aided schools in which free lunch is provided to the students. Statewide board examinations are conducted at the end of secondary education. Students who qualify are allowed to pursue a two year pre university course, after which they become eligible to pursue undergraduate degrees. There are 481 degree colleges affiliated with one of the universities in the state, viz. Bangalore University, Gulbarga University, Karnatak University, Kuvampu University, Mangalore University and Mysore University. In 1998, the engineering colleges in the state were brought under the newly formed Visvesvaraya Technological University headquartered at Belgaum, whereas the medical colleges are run under the jurisdiction of the Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. Some of these baccalaureate colleges are accredited with the status of a deemed university. There are 186 engineering, 39 medical and 41 dental colleges in the state. Udupi, Sringeri, Gokarna and Melkote are well-known places of Sanskrit and Vedic learning. In 2015 the central government decided to establish the first Indian Institute of Technology in Karnataka at Darwad. Tulu and Konkani languages are taught as an optional subject in the twin districts of South Kanara and Udupi. Manipal Academy of Higher Education, PES University and Christ University are private universities in Karnataka. Topic: <laughs> High Literacy Districts. Topic: <laughs> Topic: <laughs> <laughs> High Literacy Taliks. Topic. Topic. Media. Topic. The era of Kannada newspapers started in the year 1843 when Herman Mogeling, a missionary from Basel Mission, published the first Kannada newspaper called Mangaluru Samachara in Mangalore. The first Kannada periodical, Mysuru Vratanta Bodhini, was started by Bashiam Bashiacharya in Mysore. Shortly after Indian independence in 1948, K. N. Guruswami founded the printers Mysore Private Limited and began publishing two newspapers, Deccan Herald and Prajavani. Presently the Times of India and Vijaya Karnataka are the largest selling English and Kannada newspapers respectively. A vast number of weekly, bi-weekly and monthly magazines are under publication in both Kannada and English. Udayavani, Kannada Prabha, Samyukta Karnataka, Varthabharathi, Sanjavani, Isanj, Hosa Digantha, Karavali Ale are also some popular dailies published from Karnataka. Doordarshan is the broadcaster of the Government of India and its channel DD Chandana is dedicated to Kannada. Prominent Kannada channels include Colors Kannada, Z Kannada and Adaya TV. Karnataka occupies a special place in the history of Indian radio. In 1935, Akashvana, the first private radio station in India, was started by Prof. M. V. Gopalaswamy in Mysore. The popular radio station was taken over by the local municipality and later by All India Radio Air and moved to Bangalore in 1955. Later in 1957, Air adopted the original name of the radio station, Akashvani as its own. Some of the popular programs aired by Air Bangalore included Nisarga Sampada and Sasya Sanjivini which were programs that taught science through songs, plays and stories. These two programs became so popular that they were translated and broadcast in 18 different languages and the entire series was recorded on cassettes by the government of Karnataka and distributed to thousands of schools across the state. Karnataka has witnessed a growth in FM radio channels, mainly in the cities of Bangalore, Mangalore and Mysore, which has become hugely popular. Sports 
Karnataka's smallest district, Kodagu, is a major contributor to Indian field hockey, producing numerous players who have represented India at the international level. The annual Kodava Hockey Festival is the largest hockey tournament in the world. Bangalore has hosted a WTA tennis event and, in 1997, it hosted the fourth National Games of India. The Sports Authority of India, the premier sports institute in the country, and the Nike Tennis Academy are also situated in Bangalore. Karnataka has been referred to as the cradle of Indian swimming because of its high standards in comparison to other states. One of the most popular sports in Karnataka is cricket. The state cricket team has won the Ranji Trophy seven times, second only to Mumbai in terms of success. Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore regularly hosts international matches and is also the home of the National Cricket Academy, which was opened in 2000 to nurture potential international players. Many cricketers have represented India and in one international match held in the 1990s, players from Karnataka composed the majority of the national team. The Royal Challengers Bangalore, an Indian Premier League franchise, the Bengaluru Football Club, an Indian Super League franchise, the Bengaluru Yotas, a pro wrestling league franchise, the Bengaluru Blasters, a Premier Badminton League franchise and the Bengaluru Bulls, a pro Kabaddi League franchise are based in Bangalore. The Karnataka Premier League is an inter-regional 2020 cricket tournament played in the state. Notable sportsmen from Karnataka include B.S. Chandra Sekhar, Anil Kumble, Javagal Srinath, Rahul Dravid, Venkatesh Prasad, Robin Uthappa, Vinay Kumar, Gundappa Visvanath, Syed Kermani, Stuart Bini, Ashwini Panapa, Mahesh Bhupati, Rohan Bopana, Prakash Padukone who won the All England Badminton Championships in 1980 and Pankaj Advani who has won three world titles in Q Sports by the age of 20 including the Amateur World Snooker Championship in 2003 and the World Billiards Championship in 2005, Bijapur District has produced some of the best-known road cyclists in the national circuit. Premalata Sherban was part of the Indian contingent at the Perlis Open 99 in Malaysia. In recognition of the talent of cyclists in the district, the state government laid down a cycling track at the BR. Ambedkar Stadium at a cost of 40 lakh rupees. Sports like Koko, Kabaddi, Chini Dandu and Goli marbles are played mostly in Karnataka's rural areas. Flora and fauna Karnataka has a rich diversity of flora and fauna. It has a recorded forest area of 38,720 square kilometers (14,950 square miles), which constitutes 20.19% of the total geographical area of the state. These forests support 25% of the elephant and 10% of the tiger population of India. Many regions of Karnataka are as yet unexplored, so new species of flora and fauna are found periodically. The Western Ghats, a biodiversity hotspot, includes the western region of Karnataka. Two sub-clusters in the Western Ghats, viz. Talakaveri and Kudremuk, both in Karnataka, are on the tentative list of World Heritage Sites of UNESCO. The Bondipur and Nagarahol National Parks, which fall outside these subclusters, were included in the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve in 1986, a UNESCO designation. The Indian roller and the Indian elephant are recognized as the state bird and animal while sandalwood and the lotus are recognized as the state tree and flower respectively. Karnataka has five national parks, Anshi, Bondipur, Banargada, Kudremuk and Nagarhol. It also has 27 wildlife sanctuaries of which 7 are bird sanctuaries. Wild animals that are found in Karnataka include the elephant, the tiger, the leopard, the gaur, the sambar deer, the chital or spotted deer, the muntjac, the bonnet macaque, the slender loris, the common palm civet, the small Indian civet, the sloth bear, the dole, the striped hyena and the golden jackal. Some of the birds found here are the great hornbill, the Malabar pied hornbill, the salon frogmouth, herons, ducks, kites, eagles, falcons, quails, partridges, lapwings, sandpipers, pigeons, doves, parakeets, cuckoos, owls, nightjars, swifts, kingfishers, bee-eaters and munyas. Some species of trees found in Karnataka are Calophyllum tomentosa, Calophyllum whiteanum, Garcina cambogia, Garcina morala, Alstonia scolaris, Flacordia montana, Articarpus hirsutus, Articarpus lacucha, Cinnamomum zalinicum, Gruia tilifolia, Santalum album, Shora tellura, Emblica officinalis, Vitex altissima, and Rhytia tinctoria. 
Wildlife in Karnataka is threatened by poaching, habitat destruction, human wildlife conflict, and pollution. Topic: Tourism. Topic: By virtue of its varied geography and long history, Karnataka hosts numerous spots of interest for tourists. There is an array of ancient sculptured temples, modern cities, scenic hill ranges, forests and beaches. Karnataka has been ranked as the fourth most popular destination for tourism among the states of India. Karnataka has the second highest number of nationally protected monuments in India, second only to Uttar Pradesh, in addition to 752 monuments protected by the State Directorate of Archaeology and Museums. Another 25,000 monuments are yet to receive protection. The districts of the Western Ghats and the southern districts of the state have popular eco tourism locations, including Kudremukh, Madakiri, and Agum. Karnataka has 25 wildlife sanctuaries and five national parks. Popular among them are Bandipur National Park, Banargata National Park, and Nagarhol National Park. The ruins of the Vijayanagara Empire at Hampi and the monuments of Patadakal are on the list of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. The cave temples at Badami and the rock-cut temples at Ihole representing the Badami Chalukyan style of architecture are also popular tourist destinations. The Hoysala temples at Bailur and Halabidu, which were built with chloritic schist soapstone are proposed UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Gol Gumbas and Ibrahim Rauza are famous examples of the Deccan Sultanate style of architecture. The monolith of Gomadishwara Bahubali at Srivanabelagola is the tallest sculpted monolith in the world, attracting tens of thousands of pilgrims during the Mahamastakabhisheka festival. The waterfalls of Karnataka and Kudremukh are considered by some to be among the 1001 natural wonders of the world. Jog Falls is India's tallest single-tiered waterfall with Gokak Falls, Unchali Falls, Magad Falls, Abbey Falls and Shivanasamudra Falls among other popular waterfalls. Several popular beaches dot the coastline, including Marudeshwara, Gokarna, Malp and Karwar. In addition, Karnataka is home to several places of religious importance. Several Hindu temples including the famous Udupi Sri Krishna Matha, the Marikamba Temple at Sursi, the Kalor Mukambika Temple, the Sri Manjanatha Temple at Dharmasthala, Kuk Subramanya Temple and Sharadamba Temple at Sringer attract pilgrims from all over India. Most of the holy sites of Lingayatism, like Kudaasangama and Basavana Bhagawadi, are found in northern parts of the state. Srivanabelagola, Mudabidri and Kirkala are famous for Jain history and monuments. Jainism had a stronghold in Karnataka in the early medieval period with Srivanabelagola as its most important centre. The Shedihali Rosary Church near Shedihali, an example of French colonial Gothic architecture, is a rare example of a Christian ruin, is a popular tourist site. Recently Karnataka has emerged as a centre of health care tourism. Karnataka has the highest number of approved health systems and alternative therapies in India. Along with some ISO-certified government-owned hospitals, private institutions which provide international quality services have caused the health care industry to grow by 30% during 2004-05. Hospitals in Karnataka treat around 8,000 health tourists every year. See also Outline of Karnataka Media in Karnataka List of governors of Karnataka List of districts of Karnataka List of people from Karnataka List of butterflies of Karnataka List of airports in Karnataka Outline of India Index of India-related articles Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Government official site of Karnataka General Information Karnataka Encyclopedia Britannica Entry Karnataka at Curlie Geographic data related to Karnataka at OpenStreetMap